It's Monday morning, 9... I'm not even going to say the time for various reasons. Um, let's debase ourselves with some poke doku. Let's get the brain pumping. Let's do some lateral thinking early. Kanto is Gen 1. Baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what to do with that one. And Monotype by Leek Duck. Mm. She said, let's hit the parking lot so I can leak your duck. I said, cool. I really want to, but this will do. I got to pick up my daughter because my baby mama beat me too. She said she understood and everything was kosher. I gave her a little Will, C little Will CD and a freaking poster. The judge reading Big Boy's lyrics back to him in a deposition. NL, you fool. There's no judge in a deposition. <laughs> You've lost your touch, old man. You've lost your touch. Okay, normal Pokemon from Kanto. That's easy, bro. Radicate. 4%, baby. Fairy Pokemon from Kanto. That shouldn't be tricky, but there's a little trickiness there. Poison Pokemon from Kanto. We're going to say Ekans. 12%. Fairy, I got to say Clefairy. And if this isn't right, I'm going to throw my PC in the dishwasher. Okay, turns out it's not tricky. Hi, hi Tomo. Now, Fairy Baby must be Cleffa. If that's not a baby Pokemon, I don't know what is. Normal baby, kind of freaking me out. What about, um, hi Tomo. What's the Jinx baby called? He Heffalump? Buffalon? Heatmore? Give me a second here. Okay, monotype normality. Monotype normal. How about Rattata? Monotype fairy. How about Clefable? Please tell me she got no psychic in this, John. Monotype poison. How about Arbok? We're getting a lot of my... When the test questions give you the answers to other questions on the test. Now, here's the hard part. We got the H, but it's a full card bingo. Normal baby? There is no normal baby in the world of Pokemon. I'm going to say Togepi could be a normal baby. No! It's an egg! That's like the most normal baby out there, bro. Poison baby. I just, I got no idea on that one. Normal baby. It's a little, the, the little Jinx is called Smoochum. That's a baby Pokemon for sure. Okay, but Jinx is not normal. <laughs> Togepi used to be normal, but they changed it to fairy. Oh, brother. <laughs> it was normal when you played? Actually, Togepi didn't exist when I played. That's how... Oh, Mun Munchlax I could have gotten. Badoo was not going to happen, but Munchlax I could have gotten. Igglybuff, I could have gotten that. Toxel, not likely. Badoo, more likely for me. What, what are they cooking here with Longcat, bro? Meowth G-Max? You played silver gold, didn't you? Common mistake. I played red, yellow, blue, and I watched the first season of the anime. I believe in the last episode of the first season, Togepi shows up, and I'm like, wow, I can't wait to see what's up with this dude. And then by the time the next season came to Canada, I was already cooking on another hobby at that point. Reading Bruce Pandolfini books, probably. I ain't got time for that juvenile shit. I'm learning about the Nidorf opening. Jesse. Framed. Interesting. Interesting framed. Step one for me personally as a, as a noted cinephile. I got to guess that this is Friday Night Lights. Because it's Monday and there's light. <laughs> it's just, I mean, listen, I've never seen the Friday Night Lights movie. I know it's about football. And I know, like, you can picture an ex Explosions in the Sky track playing over this for sure. That one feels like a gimme. Like, I, people are saying great job. And I appreciate that. I guess you can't do better than one. But still. This is Monday. They should have put like a Tony Stark inserting the last Infinity Stone into his gauntlet. 
As a head coach, John Fox led two different franchises to Super Bowl appearances, the Panthers and this AFC team. Okay, John Fox. AFC teams that have made the Super Bowl between 2005 and 2015. The Patriots, the Bears, the Steelers, <clears throat> other teams, the Saints who are in the NFC, I think. The um, Patriots, <laughs> the, the Denver Broncos, Denver Broncos. Wow! That one is not as hard as it looks because only like five AFC teams have made the Super Bowl in the past 15 years. It was like 10 years of them being the Patriots. And then like the Chiefs are obviously coached by Andy Reid. So I don't know. I, I watched the, the... Wait, but the Broncos... Bronco, Broncos are AFC. Panthers are NFC. Because I watched the Broncos and Panthers Super Bowl at my friend's house. Beyonce played, I recall. Acquired from the Thunder in the Paul George trade, this big man spent two years as a sixth man with Indiana before making his first two All-Star Games appearance as a pacer in 2020 and 2021. That's simple. Kristaps Chris Chris Porzingis. No. Sabanis. That was my next guess. Damantis Sabanis. Louis Castillo had five seasons batting higher than 300 and made three all-star teams while playing for this National League East franchise, the NL East. The National League on the East side. <laughs> I am going to say that it is the team that is known as the... New York Mets. Wrong. <laughs> it is not the Mets. Who is it? The Marlins. I should have known. Why should I have known? In 2009, Wrangler Jeans began airing commercials featuring this NFL quarterback, who is now retired and in the Hall of Fame. Peyton Manning is not paid. Brett Favre. He's also extremely canceled. As someone who uh, stopped watching the NFL in like 2007, I know Brett Favre is he's canceled for sending lewd photographs to a reporter. But um, I was surprised to find how canceled he is in 2024. He's committed some kind of fraud or embezzlement. He's defrauding the Mississippi government. He stole money from charity. <laughs> he stole money from a hospital. He was on the, the cover of NFL Quarterback Club 98. They're going to have to replace uh, in the Blu-ray for There's Something About Mary. They're going to have to superimpose Tig Notaro's face over Brett Favre at the end. It's not going to make any damn sense. We're cooked, brother. I'm just going to be honest with you. I have absolutely no idea who either of these individuals are. I have no clue. Um, wait, maybe, maybe this is John Mulaney and Melissa McCarthy? Or John McCarthy? John Mulaney, Melissa McCarthy, Oh! <laughs> I'm telling you, people mock the technique going like this and, and covering up everything but the face. I was like, that's not John Mulaney. This is like some British panel show guy that I've never seen before. As soon as I did this, I was like, that's John Mulaney, bro. That's John Mulaney. Primarily selling chicken items. What fast casual chain with a green and white logo is decorated with a 1940s pre-jet aviation theme? Uh, 
Zaxby's. They're a chicken joint, right? No. Wingstop. I don't even know if they have Wingstop here. <laughs> it's not what the, what's Zaxby's. So I don't know. I was going to say Boston Market. Montana's Barbecue and Bar. Canada's home for barbecue. So true. Number one place to go when the Boston Pizza says it'll be a five-minute wait. This actor earned five Emmy nominations for being Jesse Pinkman. Aaron Paul. Following the sexual exploits of a high school senior during his parents' vacation trip, Tom Cruise, nobody knows Tommy like me. This is a movie called Risky Business, obviously. A top five hit, something just like this, was a collaboration between the Chainsmokers and Coldplay. Thank you, Peloton, for teaching me about music I never would have otherwise heard for good reason. I want something just like this. I know that one. Dude, I mean, I, I'm just pleased that we nailed the celebrity mashup. We also got the 89% Brett Favre jeans one wrong, but still, I'll take that. John Mulaney. It's crazy how if you um, put John Mulaney's face and not put it on John Mulaney's head, it actually looks nothing like John Mulaney. It looks like somebody from Little Britain. It kind of looks like both dudes from Little Britain. Okay, Connections. Connections has been making a lot of waves in social media. You got to suss out the red herring, okay? So listen, bitter, sweet, sour, salty, those are four flavors. But I think, <laughs> I think they might be, they might be tricking you, okay? Kind, sort, type, and variety. What are synonyms for a class ilk that's what i was getting at um just think of I, there's something in here sir real man <laughs> okay there is it uh words that start with a synonym for a male sir man Bit, bra, Sal, Sal is a boy's name. You can tell I've been spending too much time with my three-year-old. It's a boy's name. <laughs> sweet, romantic. I mean, bitter, sour, sweet, salty, you, you kind of just got to throw it, right? T basic taste, okay. Confront, brave. Meet face to uh, meet to take on an issue, stand up to a challenge, romantic expression, surreal manner. They are going to give me a mental disorder. I have no idea. Art movements with ism. Ah, oh, that's not even tough. I just don't know anything about art. Can't win them all? Brother, we just won. Mannerism is an art? My mannerisms are artful sometimes. Modern art. I don't know what modern art is. Is that the best art for that to be a joke? Now we're cooking with gas. Let happen. Allow. Disney princess whose name is Hawaiian for ocean. Moana. What's sent on Venmo? Money. Toad the back, toward the back of a boat. Aft. Okay. See, this shit is pissing me off, okay? Because one time, we're playing trivia on a Disney cruise, okay? They said, name a Hawaiian Disney princess. My dumbass writes down Moana. When they go over the answers, they say, name a Hawaiian Disney princess. Someone shouts out Moana. They go, close. Moana uh, is emblematic of the themes of the Pacific Islands. The answer we were looking for was Lilo. 
Okay, well then why is her name fucking Hawaiian, bro? I feel like that's a scam. I, in, in high school, I could get a half mark off the teacher just for presenting that argument. Lilo's not a princess. Actually, she's the uh, lead actress in a Disney animated film. They're all, they're all princesses. So true. She's like eight? Yeah, bro, and her dad is the chief. That makes her a fucking princess. Listen, I didn't invent primogenitor fucking inheritance, okay? You take that up with... Paradox Grand Strategy Studio. Oh, I was talking about Moana. Yeah, I haven't seen Lilo and Stitch. But I have seen the soundtrack and it's lovely. Coscodo. <clears throat> Garden Lights. Spinach and egg frittatas, 20 counts. Made with mozzarella, 20 frittatas, 70 calories each. No big deal. You just got to eat half the box for dinner. We got to stop advertising things as low calorie. I get it. Don't get me wrong. But I'm now, and maybe we're in like a bit of an edge case here. But I'm at the point where I'm like, I, I might want to taste these, but I don't want to get them because they're only 70 calories. You got to eat the damn... Half the damn box just to be satiated, man. I would, I would prefer if they were like, hey, there's 20 of them and they're 250 calories each. Then I'm like, okay, I could have like two for dinner or one as a snack or something like that. Keto Andy's beg to differ. Do they have the energy to beg to differ? Bro, bro, that's ignorant. As soon as you get in ketosis and your body starts... Uh, converting the burning fat for energy instead of sugar. You have lots of energy, bro. Especially after my nap. Shut the front door, brother. We're going family-friendly mode on this. 20 frittatas. I'm going $8.99. Eggs are relatively cheap. Hey, librarian, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you. Why are they afraid of the word quiche? Um, I have to tell you on this one. This is not a quiche. A quiche has a crust. A frittata is a crustless quiche. Wouldn't think I'd have to go through this. I, I issued some required reading uh, this weekend. It was the Elements of Basic Cooking Style by Julia Child. It's more... I'm not paying this. I'm not, pay, I'm not paying $10.99. The, the, I'm, I'm sorry to say this. Listen, it's frozen food, so let's not even get into the conversation about whether or not it tastes good. But I'm, I'm simply not paying 12 bucks for 20 frittatas that are 7 calories each. It's just, in today's America, that, that's a calculation that doesn't make sense to me. What about 12 CAD? Probably not, but it's mostly because I don't really like eggs that much. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, and trust me, any joke you could make, we've heard before. Blah, blah. The mathematics is not correct at all the time. Almost type French. Frittatas come from France, I'm assuming, which is why I, I guessed it. Um, it's 960 kilometers from France. Give me a Austria. Even closer to Austria. Okay, how about... Poland, even Hormer, but not adjacent, uh, and not adjacent to Austria either. How about Latvia? That's cooler. You don't want to go in that direction, brother. You're not that guy. How about Romania? Europe is actually, no disrespect at all. In fact, if anything, this is respectful. It's crazy that France to Romania is 960 kilometers. You pass like seven historical empires 
in what essentially amounts to what could be a 10 hour drive. I don't know. In Europe, it might take you 20 hours because the roads are winding, but it might take you five hours because there's no speed limits, right? Like that's crazy. 960 kilometers. Like, let, let me show you. Okay. 960 kilometers over here doesn't get you jack. <laughs> it might get you from Vancouver to Sacramento. That's not, I'm not, not even San Francisco and certainly not Los Angeles or San Diego, in my opinion. And it's all desert wrong. Um, none of it is desert. But it, in fact, it's actually beautiful. If you get, ever get a chance, I'd recommend taking the Pacific Highway. I mean, it's hard to do when you've got like a job because it, it's a long fucking drive. But it is gorgeous. It's actually a rainforest. That's 1,400 kilometers. Son of a gun. <laughs> it could take you from Vancouver to, uh, I don't know, even more northern California. I can't name a city that, that's that north. Texas is bigger than many countries. We have to do this every time. I'm sorry to the Texans. Texans are literally like, Texas is so big. It's smaller than British Columbia, bro. It's fine. Like, I'm sure in America you can get away with it because no one knows how big any other parts of the world are. But I'm going to keep you honest here, okay? Now, now go, go to the next argument. Go to the next argument. We have more economic power. Okay, is that what we were talking about? Braggy? Isn't BC just a frozen wasteland? We got fucking whales, bro. It's a rainforest. It does get cold, though. There's eight people there. Isn't that what you like? Isn't that why you move to the American South? Is so that your neighbors can't hear you fart? I thought that was like your whole thing. You're cooking their ass? I, I, we didn't have to get, I have no problem with Texas. I mean, I, I, like, I imagine if you took the median Texan, I would disagree with them on some things, but I respect it as an American state that has its own distinct cultural identity a great history of cuisine and certainly is one of the economic engines driving the earth, not just the nation, but the earth. But like, stop bragging about how big your shit is. It's not that big, okay? It's not your fault that there's fucking 50 states, but quit bragging, okay? That's all I'm saying. Stop glazing Texas. Texas gets more money from the government than it contributes. I believe that you fact check it, but I don't believe the fact. How can that be true? They all have 10 gallon hats. There's no way, man. Dude, come on. Go, someone run the numbers for me on that. And by run the numbers, I mean look it up. There's no, isn't Texas like the sixth largest economy in the world if you took it out of the United States? Hang on, I got a burp. That's California. Okay, isn't Texas like seventh then? <laughs> they are a net contributor. Look at that. Listen, we're not going to, we, we can argue with facts and logic, okay? We don't have to uh, debase ourselves by telling lies about Texas. We can just use the stuff they willfully tell us to make fun of them. It's eighth on a basic Google search. Thanks for the insult. It wasn't, it wasn't a particularly complicated Google search. It was a basic Google search. Hmm, why didn't I do that? Oh, maybe because I'm fucking trying to guess what this piece of crap is right here. Isn't this the country that's on its own flag? Is this not Kosovo or have I lost my mind? Oh, <laughs> really? I thought it was the country that's on its, or is it Cyprus? And Cyprus is on its own flag? Oh, no, 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 I'm lost. You're Georgia. You are Georgia. Okay, we got there. I guess the, the one that's on its own flag is like, it's like rotated a little bit. Bonus round, please. My life is a bonus round. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. 
January 19th, 2001. Okay, I am in the seventh grade. It's just after Christmas break in the seventh grade. People go on apeshit for Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. People are going apeshit for like Moulin Rouge. People losing their minds over, over Moulin Rouge. Let's see. Second week, 44 million starring Julia. People were going crazy, 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 crazy for Save the Last Dance. This movie is one of the biggest movies from my adolescence that's now completely forgotten. 20th Century Fox, it has made $181 million, but it's too late for X-Men and too early for X2. Starring Tom Hanks in 2001. It's pre the terminal, post Castaway, pre Toy Story 3, post Toy Story 2. And that obviously wouldn't be 20th Century Fox. I gotta, I gotta simmer on this for a second. I'm gonna know it, obviously. I just got to simmer it a bit. Well, let's see. It's an adventure drama. We'll simmer that one for just a second. I don't want to use too many clues if I don't have to. USA Films, 46 milli, starring Michael Douglas from the year 2001. Am I insane to think this is a movie called Unfaithful? That's Richard Gere, you piece. Michael Douglas, 2000. I got to simmer on that one. I mean, it's January here, but still... Sony Pictures, 8 milli, starring Jason Statham, 2001. Certainly feel, I feel like that's a little early for The Transporter. I feel like it might be Snatch. I'm assuming that, word traveled slower back in the day. So this was probably making waves in England. Obviously, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels had come out earlier. But like, it wasn't like, you know, bam, everything everywhere all at once hits. And then like, everyone on the earth under the age of 28, saw it in like a month. Like sometimes it would take like two years for this stuff to kind of reach like a cultural zeitgeist. And now everybody knows Snatch now, but at the time it was like a, it was a slower build. There was no internet. Well, you paid by the minute at least. Sixth week, Paramount Pictures, 162 milli, Mel Gibson, 2001. A comedy romance, it's what women want. Best use of five points I've ever seen. What women want. Okay. Tom Hanks. Helen Hunt. It's Castaway. <laughs> I was wrong. It is not too early to be, or too late to be Castaway. That's Castaway, bro. USA Films Michael Douglas in the thriller drama crime category. Ah, it's don't say a word. I'll never tell anybody. What? Tagline. No one gets away clean. Also starring Benicio Del Toro. I got to reveal all hints. Is this just, it's Steven Soderbergh. It's fucking traffic, bro. I should have typed in traffic. I should have typed in traffic. I don't know why, in my head, Michael Douglas is not on this poster. Traffic for me is a, it's a Steven Soderbergh, Benicio Del Toro, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Paul Rubens joint. Or am I, do I have it confused with Blow? With um, Penelope Cruz and Johnny Depp. She does dip beneath the lasers. Anyway, that was okay. You got to combine with blows somehow. I mean, you know, they both came out around the same time and I was like 12. I'll give myself a pass for that one. It's a Catherine Zeta-Jones joint in my mind. Don't quote Ray Charles in my chat. We already had Georgia in World Law. I'm going to guess that Nick Frost and Simon Pegg go together. Sandra Bullock, only two characters. Alfonso Cuaron, astronaut. That's gravity. 
Uh, remake, Melissa McCarthy, Ursula. This is Hot Fuzz. Give me, a, give me a moment here. Only two characters here. Hot swap these ones. This is Spotlight. This is the Little Mermaid remake. Now, here's where things get tricky. <laughs> here's where things get tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Rachel McAdams, Astronauts. I don't believe it's the time traveler's wife. The astronaut's wife? That's a different movie, too. That's from when I was, like, 10. Melissa McCarthy, uh, slang term for police. Boston, Sandra Bullock. The Heat, 2014. He's actually done it. What, 2013? Whatever. You got me. It is 2013. Hey, NL, I was having Balato Balatro dreams last night. I hear you. I went to bed at um, 10.30. I woke up at 3 to clean up some cat vomit, and I woke up at 4 because my daughter was crying. And every time I woke up, this is what I say, like, when you're asleep, your brain is conscious, and then when you wake up, it, like, flushes what you were doing when you were sleeping. Every time I woke up, I was like, holy shit, I've been playing Balatro in my head for, like the last 90 minutes at a minimum. If I had slept all the way through the night, I never would have known, but I caught myself lacking overnight. Like I, it, I woke up to the sound of like my cat going and then in my head, I was like, I've just been matching like king, 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 king. No wonder my ass is fucking sleepy, bro. Take a rest. It's a mind virus. The Fugitive Air Force One. Movies that star Harrison Ford. Maybe not. Oh, he's probably in Star Wars last time I checked. The adaptation is, of course, Nicolas Cage. Chris Cooper, Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep, who is also in... Am I in well, she's in Mamma Mia. Am I insane to say that she's in Don't Look Up? Did she? No, she was the president, right? She would debase herself with that. And then Lake Placid. Witness. Independence Day. Red. Lost Highway. You got a little David Lynch in there. A little Robert Blake in there. Space Balls. Mamma Mia. Okay, let's start crunching some numbers. Don't Look Up should go here, because this is the Meryl Streep connection. This will give us one piece away from Harrison Ford. And the rest of them, I'm confused. Wait, whoa, whoa, okay. Air Force One, Angel Has Fallen, Don't Look Up, and Independence Day are movies where the president is in danger. <laughs> Yeah, okay, hang on. Oh, the films in which they play fictional presidents. Okay, all right. The hell else was Harrison Ford in, bro? So this must, they must all be the same. Ah, okay, Red, Angel Has Fallen, and Seven are all Morgan Freeman. Lake Placid, Independence Day, and Lost Highway. My problem is, I don't know, so Morgan Freeman or Harrison Ford were not in Spaceballs. So this must be swapped. <laughs> who, who is, what's the Spaceballs connection? Bill, oh, Bill Pullman! He's the guy from Lost Highway, of course. I, I, I got tunnel vision thinking like LL Cool J was going to be here somehow. And then they get hot swapped. All right. I didn't know Morgan Freeman was in the... Uh, he was in the Lego movie. I had no idea. That's a good puzzle, though. 
Everyone's in the Lego movie. I didn't know I was like 31 when it came out. He plays God in the Lego movie. He actually has to be, if that's true, and I don't know if that is true because I haven't seen it. If that's true, he must be the actor with the most credits as God. He's got at least two. X to Serpico. All right. Palacho! What is <laughs> Gattaca! You can just, what is X? X stars one or more of the uh, elevated horror it girls. I believe Mia Goth is in it. Jenna Ortega might be in it. And I know Serpico is Al Pacino and um, John Casale. So we're going to start with X because I don't know how the hell the... By the way, can, 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 dab me up a little bit, okay? Look at this. It's got Jenna Ortega and Mia Goth and Kid Cudi. I'm just, Byron Skillington. Byrony Skillington. Sounds like... <laughs> I don't want to be rude. It sounds like something you order at like... The Haunted Mansion restaurant at Disneyland. So I think we got to get to, we got to go backwards. How does one go backwards? I think you go Karen Gillen. And then I'm not going to connect through Marvel because this is like a, a rule that we, we use. So we have to get to Al Pacino. I would think that you go the bubble from Judd Apatow, which will then have someone who is in Funny People. Or you could get, they're, they're two away at worst. Funny People takes you to Adam Sandler, which takes you to Jack and Jill, which takes you to Dunk. So if I had to guess who was in Funny People, my biggest guess would be his wife, Leslie Mann. Put some respect on it, bro. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to know, man. Sometimes you just got to know. Now, we didn't do it in two. You can go Britney Snow to Hangman to Al Pacino. But Karen Gillan, The Bubble, Leslie Mann, Funny People, Adam Sandler, Jack and Jill, Al Pacino. Pretty good. Pretty good. I can't be mad about that. Maybe I'm not washed in movie to movie anymore. Is it possible that I've undergone neurogenesis? You didn't do it in 13, which is an improvement. Yeah, okay, well listen, watch yourself. This is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Metacritic score 91. This is Shadows of Shadow of the Colossus. Originally on the PlayStation 2. This is Ico. A Action Adventure Stealth. Smell like you're solid three, Peace Walker. I guess I should, or Snake Eater. I guess I should have known from the snake, huh? <laughs> I, got, I got tunnel visioned on the Mexico filter. I was like, bro, this has got to be Ico. That's true. I wish I could do a, a Joe from Family Guy voice. Snake Eater! <laughs> my heart was in the right place. They, absolutely no room for execution on that one, but my heart was in the right place. That's so bad. You know, it's the, he says, hey, Peter. Snake Eater. Guys, I'm just going to level with you. If you thought about clicking on the big green button, you're not ready for unauthorized or unsupervised internet access. You know, if this was 2007, that's one thing. You Google where to download movies, you go to a web page, and then it has eight big red buttons that say click here, click here, click here, click here, click here. And then there's one little blue hyperlink that has the name of your movie with DivX on the end. <laughs> That's a different story, okay? 
This is God of War. New. This is an ice axe from Rise of the Tomb Raider. Yes, okay. I played that game. This is from a different era of my life. I played the game through in its entirety, which is crazy. They, one, if I ever did Two Truths and a Lie, gaming edition, and I had the full chat, my lie would definitely be that I beat, or my, my truth would definitely be that I beat Tomb Raider and Rise of the Tomb Raider all the way through to completion. What would your lie be? I don't know. I could say anything because I know you're picking the Tomb Raider thing. Did you have fun? Like, reasonably so. <clears throat> I don't know why. I don't really know why I did it. You know why I did it? And that, like, I'm, I, this is not like an r slash child full uh, bit, okay? But, like, I just had more time than I knew what to do with. I may never see those days again. Nowadays, I'm like, if I had 12 hours to fucking beat the story mode of Tomb Raider that I thought was like a three and a half out of five, you know what I do with that now? Well, I'll tell you, first thing I probably do is respond to my account's emails before it becomes like a dire situation. <laughs> now, <laughs> with the remaining eight and a half hours, I don't know, man, but I'd be cooking. The lawn would look mighty nice, let's put it that way. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Mach Sonic Adventure 2. All right, that was not a good guess. I'm going to take the most recent game that's come out Helldivers 2. All right. Well, okay, Sony was involved. Oh, if, if Arrowhead was involved, we would know it because it would either be Magicka or. The showdown effect or like Helldivers 1. Okay, so getting Sony's a big get. It did not come out on the PS5, but it probably came out on the PlayStation fucking 3. Maybe Heavy Rain was involved in this at some point. Okay, there's a Sony connection. It's later than 2010. And it is not an adventure game, which we already knew, but it's a, sh a shooter or a tactical game. Um, Kill Zone. Shadowfall possibly came out for... Whoa! It only came out for PS4. Killzone 3, bro. That's Once you start getting those green boxes, it's over. Best guess of my life was, was Helldivers 2. Giving us the Sony connection really put us on the right track early. Daily Tomato Movie Trivia. My goat's hidden the glizzy sideways. You know what I realized? I, I was thinking about this this weekend. I'm not doing this just to be, uh, I don't know, like what, what's the word, contrarian? When I get close to the end of a hot dog, I kind of eat it like a hamburger. Like I kind of turn it sideways. And when I get close to the end of a hamburger, I kind of eat it like a hot dog. Like, you, you'd have to be crazy to eat a hot dog, or to eat a hamburger like a taco when you first get it. But when you got like four bites left, rotating it on its axis and, and doing it hot dog style feels right. There's something like when I get a, uh, I had a, a long Italian sandwich this weekend. It was not from Subway, okay? And you know, as an aside, I, because I'm living in my 90s era, I went to the restaurant, I ordered it at the counter. Guy handed me the sandwich five minutes later, said, hey, I like your jacket. They're right, men don't get complimented enough. My ass is straight as hell. And I was like, I mean, it got me feeling a certain way. I was like, he likes my jacket? <laughs> Holy. It felt, I'll be riding on that compliment until like the 2030s, bro. What kind of jacket was it? It was mesh, and I had no shirt on underneath. So you could see both of my nipple piercings. Hot. <laughs> it was just a jacket. Anyway, 
When I, I was eating the sandwich, normal way. I should be careful with my hand placement, I suppose. Got to the end of the sandwich, and you know, they got like a seam, like the, the bread is closed on one side, and then it's open on the other side where they made the cut. I was like, the end of the sandwich? You gotta go like that, bro. It's, it's designed to be consumed in that capacity because it's got the load-bearing edge on the bottom. I'm not saying we're eating sandwiches all wrong. Like, there's a reason that people eat them the way they eat them. I'm just saying, next time you're eating it, think about it a little bit. If it's cut all the way through, you don't have a choice because your shit's all going to fall out. But if it's only cut 75% of the way in, like a hot dog bun, render on the, onto Joey Chestnuts, that which is Joey Chestnuts. A 1978 adventure animation film with two words. Oh, no. Robin Hood. Probably not PG now that I think about it. It's a work deeply enamored with its source material. The Hobbit. It's The Hobbit, 1978. I hate that they made me type the. Here we go. I want, it's not The Hobbit. The Hobbit. A rather faithful adaptation of Richard Adams' book. Uh oh. Next. <laughs> the ra Oh, Watership Down, The Rabbits. The Rabbits, George. The Rabbits. Kind of a goaded poster, too. We get these. I never read it. I don't like animal books. Um, I've got a little food guesser. They disappoint me. Interesting. I mean, to me, this looks like a, a beef burgundy. I see flat leaf parsley, carrots, and large chunks of beef with a bay leaf. This seems emblematic of French cuisine. I'm going to say this is from the country known as France. Beef burgundy. It is indeed. A classic French dish. Let me guess. It's rooted in the traditions of the region. <laughs> of course the food is rooted in the heritage of the tradition. It came for free with your fucking culture, bro. Now, this is a full English breakfast from the nation of the United Kingdom. Also called a full Scottish or a full Irish. Depending on whether the pub that you're at in Vancouver serves Boddington's, Guinness, or Harp. We go next. This is soup. <laughs> Am I fucking crazy? It's soup and saltines. How could I not say it's served in a mug? This is the United. This is the, it's not the United. It's Canada. What? It's it's the United. Two thousand kilometers. It's the United States. Chicken mull. The fuck is chicken mull, bro? That's soup. The exact origins of chicken mull are unknown. The name mull is derived from Scottish, which means fish or meat stew. It typically contains chickens, onions, celery, carrots, potatoes, and a thickening agent. Yeah, I've heard of this recipe before. It's called every soup that's ever existed. It's a popular comfort food in the southern United States and also every other country on earth. In recent years, chicken mull has gained recognition outside of the South and can be found on the menus of some restaurants. Bro, it's, it's chicken soup, bro! That's every fucking soup on the planet. It's not soup, it's mull. It's not soup anymore, it's mull. Anyway, we still got 14,000. I'm a little pissed off, though. Chicken mull. It's, it's pissing me off even more because there's a soup called mulligatani. It's like they're imposing on two different parts of the soup political compass here. You're right. Rainbolt would be like, that's American grass. That's Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. Nominated for an acting Oscar. 
$100 million plus box office run, three or more word title. Okay, easy, bro. <clears throat> easy. Amy Adams, $100 million plus box. Amy Adams, three or more word title. Catch me if you can. Old heads remember that she was in that. 17% of people remember that she's in that. Jessica Shastain, $100 million plus box office run. Ridley Scott sends his regards. This is The Martian. Jessica Shastain, three or more word title. Am I crazy to think that Jessica Shastain is in, a nominated, in an Oscar-nominated movie called Women Talking? Guys, I'm fucked. I am fucked. I'm fucked, bro. Three or more word title. The Suicide Squad. $100 million box office run. Suicide Squad. Now, unfortunately, there's only two Suicide Squads. Otherwise, because you know she probably got popped for Best Supporting Actress for that. Best Actress, they did a big campaign for Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, obviously. Viola Davis, nominated for an acting Oscar. Okay, hang on, hang on. Amy Adams, nominated for an Oscar, is going to be a rival. That's politics. That's politics. It's going to be American Splendor. I mean, as I do this every time. American Hustle. $100 million plus box office run. Amy Adams. Sure, Arrival is going to be in there. But we could juice it a little bit. We could juice it a little bit. We could juice... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It, Jessica Chastain is in Scenes from a Marriage, bro. What? With Oscar Isaac. Oh, it's like a HBO fucking we cut a movie into four pieces type of joint. Okay, and what I mean listen, it's easy, but I wanna I wanna kind of fucking fish for something a little maybe like Blades of Glory. She's not in that one, huh? <laughs> Walk hard? Is she in walk hard? We should just pull, just get some points on the board, man. This is a disaster. Oh, man. That's Jenna Fisher. She's in one of those comedies. She's in one of those... Oh, she's in Talladega Nights. Oh. <laughs> oh, Talladega Nights. Enchanted. Fences. Fences. It was on the tip of my tongue. Zero Dark Dirty, of course. Interstellar. That was a tough one for me. I'm not beating the allegations today. Amy Adams is in Tenacious D in The Pick of Destiny. Actually insane three or more word title guess. You should use that. That's a good one. Is Jessica Chastain really in both movies where Matt Damon gets marooned on a strange planet? So far. So far, you're right. That's astute. I never thought about that. Evince a verb meaning to constitute outward evidence of. Evincere comes from Latin, merging E for two and vincere Excuse for conquer. Me? Evince a verb meaning to constitute evince? outward evidence of. Evincere comes from Latin, merging E for two and vincere for conquer. Evince a verb meaning to constitute outward evidence I don't even know what of. she's asking. Evincere comes from Latin, merging E for two and vincere for conquer. Evince a verb meaning to con- Evince. E vince. <laughs> oh, baby. Dom, a noun meaning a stately building, mansion. This word has roots in French, Italian, and Latin languages. Dom, a noun meaning Dom. a stately building, Okay, that's not... I, a dome is a tennis ball cut in half, actually. Cranky. A adjective right. meaning... listen with your subtweets. A noun meaning any of a... They brought the heat today, Wanted. Man. A verb meaning to be needy or... Okay, next. Meeting. A noun meaning an act or process of... That's way easier than any of the easy words. Merely an adverb meaning nothing more than... Merely, good word. Stilton. 
A, a noun cheese. You're not going to beat me on a cheese? Chives. A noun. Chives, I'm sure. Brazenness. An adjective meaning made of brass. I love when the AI gets uh, tripped up. You know, like when a human being struggles to pronounce a word and they sound it out. I love when the AI goes brazenness. Like they're running out of chat GPT tokens. Corta. A noun meaning a long, loose-fitting, collarless shirt of a style originating in India. The word kurta is derived from Hindi. Yep, I could have told you that. <laughs> a unwanted. A adjective meaning being out of the ordinary, rare, unusual. A unwanted. A adjective meaning being out of the ordinary, rare, unusual. A unwanted. A adjective meaning being out of the ordinary, rare, unusual. A unwanted. A adjective... Am I stupid? This can't be a word. This is a word you make up in a Final Fantasy game. Like, oh, bro, don't hit the boss with your magic attack right now. They're not Aeon wanted until the next stack pops. A unwanted. An adjective meaning being out of the ordinary. I, okay, all right, fine, okay? I don't know where the A come from. <laughs> where the A comes from, I should say. And it wasn't unwanted like an Angelina Jolie movie where the bullets go straight. So it had to be with a different vowel. Pamphlet. Oh. A noun meaning an unbound... Any day of the week. Hallucinations. A noun meaning... Verger. A noun meaning the greenness of growing vegetation. Also, yeah. such vegetation... Uh, really? I would have thought it would be with an E for like verdancy. Oh, verdure. <laughs> verdure. Oh my God, the gurse is so verdure. Look at the verdure of the gurse. In semblance. I think we did really well today considering we had to figure out what half the words were based on the cooked pronunciation. I mean, Aeon Wanted was like a hell of a pull. And then this one's just for daddy, honestly. Is it? <laughs> Is it? Okay. Oilers and um, Blackhawks. There's a guy called Steve Sullivan. All right. That was fun. Hope you had a good time. Fuck you. Steve Sullivan didn't... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Steve Steos. Sergey Samsonov. I knew it. I knew it. Connor eats pants? I'm just joking. Do you see that video of the guy drinking all the uh, ancient bacteria in that glacier? And then when he pulls the mug out, it kind of looks like Connor eats pants. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, me too. Me too. What do you mean? Well, he's in like, you know, Alaska or Antarctica or something. And he dips his mug into like a, a, an antediluvian stream of water to be like, check out how fresh this water is. He's probably fine. Don't get me wrong. Like maybe that water has been flowing for, you know, a million years. But like... All the tweets that replied to it were like him at the doctor when he finds out he's got 15,000 different parasites that have no historical record of ever having existed with human beings before. But it's like, it's water, bro. Water can't make you sick. <laughs> It's water. It's like, it's the universal solvent, bro. Some people can just tank it. So true. Like those people on I Was Poisoned that were like, every time I drink this Mountain Dew, I get sick. This is our third 12 pack and we're both at the hospital now. And then they showed a picture of the, the outside of the can. Like you're going to look at the can and be like, yeah, that did it. You can really tell. Oh, man. Maybe this is not fair, by the way. Did I even slash marker, slash marker me on the dolls? Of course, we're going to play some more Balatro. 